Good morning, dear friends. Uh, this is my second time in Australia. My first time was, uh, but my first time in uh, Adelaide, but this is my second time in Australia. And last time I visited uh, uh, Perth. Perth? Perth. Perth. So I, I got an experience there. Uh, one night I uh, walked out of, of the hotel and looked up uh, to the sky and, and I saw stars and the stars were very bright. And then suddenly I realized that I know nothing about the stars. In Beijing, I know the, star, the names of the stars, uh, but in Paris, that time, uh, I found that that's a strange sky. Although I, it seems that it seemed that I I was familiar with the stars, but actually I can't name any of them. So that reminds me of uh, something, um, some differences between the between the systems of knowledges, and uh, and uh, I thought I know something about the sky, and then after I arrived in Australia last time, also this time. I uh, I know that uh, uh, well actually I'm almost an idiot in about uh, in knowing uh, many things in this world, and uh, and uh, so uh, this time I I found that uh, I've got this uh, new word antipodian antipodian it's it's a new word for me. I didn't quite understand it uh, when I was in in China, and uh, and this time I tried to understand this word. Um, uh, I didn't. The reason why I didn't quite understand it because because I'm not sure whether it's correct or not. But because I feel that in China we don't have such an idea of um, yuan. I don't know how to translate it it into Chinese. Um, so it's quite interesting to have this word. Once I have a new word, then it means that I need to have a new way to look at uh, certain things. Um, so um, I, I remember I have some uh, experiences of, uh, of uh, knowing Western uh, writers, of uh, Western writers, Western poets, Whenever I meet uh, uh, Western writers, especially in English-speaking writers and poets, uh, people always ask me something about Chinese culture, and uh, they always, um, how to say, uh, show me that they they know they they have a knowledge of uh, traditional Chinese uh, culture, and I. Uh, but I got some uh, interesting, I think I, I was inspired by some interesting ideas, interesting uh, anic literary anecdotes. Uh, and uh, that also uh, reminds me of the differences of understandings of the culture, uh, no, of the Chinese culture. I remember once uh, uh, the American poet Gary Snyder uh, visited Ezra Pond and criticized Ezra Pound for introducing, uh, he, first he praised Ezra Pound for, uh, for, for introducing Chinese culture uh, to the United States, to the Western world, and secondly he criticized Ezra Pound for in introducing uh, Confucianism instead, instead of Taoism to the uh, Western world. And uh, according to Gary Snyder, uh, what uh, he and uh, his friends needed was uh, Taoism, Buddhism, but uh, but then uh, he criticized Pan for 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 making a mistake in uh, in 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 doing the uh, translations of uh, Book of Songs. Uh, the other title is uh, Confucius Odes, and also uh, other Da Xue and Zhong Yong other books translated by Ezra Pan. So uh, it's 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 quite interesting. Uh, in in China, Confucianism is always regarded as the mainstream uh, in the society, in the uh, Chinese way of thinking. But it seems that Gary Snyder and his friends, fellow friends, 
they had a deeper interest in, in Taoism, in Buddhism. And uh, the other time in Germany, I met a, an, uh, an American professor. Uh, he praised Chinese uh, culture. He said, I'm a lover of Chinese culture. And I said, what have you read about, Chi uh, about China? He said, I love, I, I have a deep love for a book, which is called Bi Yan Lu. Bi Yan Lu, that's a book of uh, Zen, Zen Buddhism. Uh, it's a it's a book with uh, lots of stories about Chinese and Japanese uh, Zen Buddhist uh, stories, uh, and uh, then I I feel quite interesting uh, because Bi Yan Lu in China I don't think many Chinese know this book uh, except for those people who who are believers of Buddhism and who who has a deep interest in 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 uh, in Zen Buddhism. Um, and uh, also, once I traveled together with a, an Australian uh, poet, uh, I don't know if any of you uh, know this uh, poet. I think it's quite, I don't know, I'm not sure. His name is uh, uh, Robert Gray. Yes? Yeah. So I once traveled together with Robert Gray in Guangxi province in, in China. And then Robert quoted a, a poem by Li Bai, and that's uh, Li Bai's poem, Wen Yu He Shi Qi Bi Shan, I don't know how to translate that. Uh, then I, I can feel that uh, uh, Robert has a, has a deep love for, for Li Bai's poetry. Um, um, and then it reminds me of other uh, poets from the United States who, 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 uh, who praised uh, Tang poetry highly, and uh, and um, uh, then I found the differences in reading Tang poetry uh, between the uh, the Chinese readers, me myself, and also the uh, Western readers. Uh, that is, for the uh, for most of the poets English speaking from the English English speaking world, that is Tang poetry uh, is something like. Uh, contemporary poetry. But for when, whenever a Chinese uh, thinks about uh, Tang poetry, it's a kind of poetry, it's, it's a poetry from Tang dynasty, that means, uh, that means uh, 1,003 or 400 years old. Uh, so it's, it's quite different. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, And so it's um, uh, so so this this difference uh, shows that uh, uh, there's a different there are different ways to imagine uh, China to imagine China's culture um, for a for a for a Chinese uh, China for me uh, is a country with different layers. Different layers. So a China from uh, Qing Dynasty, late Qing Dynasty, and a China from, let's say, Song Dynasty, a China of Tang Dynasty, a China of uh, before Tang Dynasty. That's uh, uh, six dynasties. We call that six dynasties. And before that, there was a Han Dynasty. And before that, there was. Uh, there was uh, the uh, Qin Dynasty and before that, the Warring States period of, of time that's uh, more than 2,000 years old. So, so different layers of, of, uh, of China. So I may say that China is China's. China is China's. And, uh, and nowadays, I think it's quite difficult for the, even for the Chinese to imagine the whole country. Uh, uh, most of the Chinese, uh, whenever they, they talk about China, usually they talk about uh, late Qing Dynasty China or the Republican uh, China. And it's quite hard for the Chinese to think about, let's say, Song Dynasty China. Uh, whenever, whenever people talked about uh, traditional Chinese painting, they always talk about the uh, 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 kind of painting called 文人画, that's uh, uh, 
uh, uh, that's a man of letters uh, paintings. Uh, but before that, uh, for instance, from, from Northern Song Dynasty, that's another, another style of, uh, of, uh, uh, of, of the painting. So the, the painting has uh, another, had, uh, another uh, style. And, uh, and um, so I, I feel that uh, there, there might be several uh, preconditions for me, for my friends, to, to have an imagine, to, to try to imagine the, uh, uh, to imagine, to imagine China and its life. So first, first thing is that China is in, uh, well, on the whole, it's an uh, agri, its culture is agriculture. And agriculture means that the Chinese way of imagination comes from the earth not from, let's say, not, not from the ocean, not from the seas. It's from the earth, it's from the rivers, and it's a kind of inland imagination. Inland way, inland imagination, inland way of imagination. I don't know how to put it in English. And, uh, and, and, uh, so, um, so when we read ancient Chinese poetry, we can feel that people, poets from ancient China, most of the poets were afraid of the seas, were afraid of the uh, of the ocean of the seas, and they have uh, uh, they have. Um, uh, it seems that, that they are close to to the field, to the rivers, and the second thing is that uh, uh, the uh, the. Uh, now, if we have the map of China, we can we can tell that uh, the the geography is that uh, three fifths of the area of China that's uh, uh, mountains. So mountains uh, and high uh, was that plateaus, and only only two fifths of the uh, of the uh, of the area of the whole area. That's uh, agricultural area. So usually, uh, well, so comparatively, the agricultural area is smaller than the uh, than 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 other parts of China. And the uh, the third thing is that the la the language, the Chinese, the Chinese language. Um, uh, um, for for Chinese, it's more complicated because. Because we had we have uh, literary Chinese or literary Chinese from ancient times, and also vernacular Chinese, and uh, vernacular Chinese was influenced by Western languages. Uh, it's uh, so it was influenced by English, and also the words, lots of words, uh, went to Chinese from from Japanese. Actually, it was Japan, uh, uh, Japanese who first translated Western words. Uh, into uh, Japanese, then the uh, the Chinese uh, got got these terms, and uh, and uh, and there are some. Uh, so so it means uh, that the uh, the modern Chinese had been uh, influenced by 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 translations. Uh, the first thing, the first powerful thing, uh, which which influenced uh, Chinese language is not the translation of literature. Actually, it's the translation of Marxism and Leninism. And uh, in China, uh, ordinary people, they're familiar with, with some quotations from, from Marx, from, from, from Marx, Engels, uh, Lenin. Uh, they are not literary people, but, but they can recite some sayings by these, uh, by these uh, Western, uh, Western uh, philosophers, Western, uh, Western people. Uh, and uh, so the language, the Chinese, I mean, vernacular Chinese uh, is deeply influenced by the translation and Marx, uh, the translation of Marxism that uh, plays an important part in, in, in giving the influence. And uh, so the vernacular Chinese is getting its sentences, the length of sentences is getting longer and longer. Ancient Chinese or literary Chinese were uh, short sentences. So short, when we try to think with short sentences, 
it means that we don't need logic. But if we try to think with long sentences, then we need to have to have logic, uh, to have clauses. So, uh, so short sentences made ancient China, and long sentences me shows a process of how to say uh, of pursuing uh, modernity. Let let me use a big word. Uh, so, uh, but on the whole, the Chinese sentences, uh, no matter whether it's it's uh, it's uh, ancient Chinese or vernacular Chinese, uh, are short sentences. Although it's getting longer and longer, but 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 still, it's short sentences. We can't imagine to write a sentence uh, for, uh, for for the whole page as just one sentence, like uh, Charles Dickens or or or. Uh, 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 Shelley, the uh, English poet, who can read, uh, who, uh, who has one sentence for a poem called, uh, is that Ozymandias? That, that, that's a poem, a, a sonnet written by, by Shelley. That's just one sentence. It's impossible to write poems like that in, in, in Chinese. So, uh, so, so long sentences and short sentences, uh, uh, yeah, makes differences, and uh, on since on the whole it's short sentences. The Chinese short is short sentences. It means that we have different ways of of imagining uh, China itself and also the world. So uh, so so maybe uh, uh, I think maybe uh, when whenever you you go to ask a Chinese to to to. To ask him uh, about his impression of Australia, it could be a different, uh, different Australia because it could be a short sentence, uh, short sentence, short sentences, and Australia of short sentences. And this is the third thing: the language, and the fourth thing is the population. It's it's such a big population in China. Uh, 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 since the population is so big, it means that we don't have much space between between persons, and uh, and uh, it's it means that it's it's a little bit uh, uh, difficult to have a to um, to imagine individuality. So why uh, people always uh, uh, pay attention to? Let's say uh, the uh, the word. Uh, let me use the uh, collective. So so you always have a sense of the clack, uh, collective. You always have a sense of community. You always have a sense of a village or a, or, a, or a small city. It mean well, people people have to because because of the population because because there's no chance for almost no chance for the Chinese to to enjoy. Uh, the solitude to 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 uh, of course there are spaces but uh, uh, historically or uh, culturally uh, saying that is it's a little bit harder for the Chinese to be to be uh, with himself all the time uh, so uh, if you live in the cities then it means that uh, you have to be used to to the noises to the uh, to the uh, to the chaos uh, to the, to the people in the streets, to the crowds, and uh, but I have to say that that's another scene, that's another scene of life, and so it's it's also interesting, and uh, so uh, uh, by the end I think I, I'm going to read a poem to show that uh, my poem to show that the, the Chinese way of understanding. Its uh, its uh, situation, its reality, its uh, its, uh, its its history. The poem, uh, the title of this poem is uh, "My Grandmother." My grandmother. It's not really about my grandmother. My my grandmother died when my father was only eight or nine years old. So it's uh, I uh, I wrote it in, in. Yeah, I take um, I I took uh, I take all grandmas uh, in China as my grandmother. Uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a poem. It's a short poem. My grandmother coughs, waking a thousand roosters. A thousand roosters crow, waking ten thousand people. 
Ten thousand people walk out of the village. Roosters in the village still crowing. The cr- the crowing roosters stop. My grandmother still coughing. My still coughing grandmother mentions her grandmother. Her voice getting softer, as if it were my grandmother's grandmother's voice getting softer. My grandmother talks and talks, then stops, shutting her eyes, as if it were only now that my grandmother's grandmother really died. Thank you.